Hey guys, this is Andre coming to you straight from Noosa Heads, Queensland, Australia. And I'm here and basically in Trucker's Paradise. And I just wanted to give you a quick walk around and show you some of the vehicles here, but also show you some images and video clips of the pickup trucks I saw here just around town. Actually, all of the trucks I'm about to show you are forbidden fruit. They're not available for sale in the United States. And I'm gonna start with Toyota. Toyota is the most popular manufacturer in terms of sales in Australia. And one of the most popular vehicles here is the Toyota Hilux Ute. Basically a mid-sized pickup truck that's loosely related to the Toyota Tacoma that's available stateside. Most of the trucks I saw were powered by a 2.8 liter turbo diesel four cylinder. When you convert the power ratings from kilowatts and newton meters, it approximately puts out 176 horsepower and up to 332 pound feet of torque. But there is a forbidden fruit that is sweeter even than the Hilux. And I'm talking about the Land Cruiser 70. And there are several of them you can actually buy currently from a dealership. And it comes either in a two-door chassis cab pickup truck version, also available as a four-door, but also available as a full SUV body truck. And it's basically an old design with new technology sprinkled throughout it. So if you look at the interior, there's a modern design to the steering wheel, to the dashboard, and it has airbags. But under the hood of this beast is a 4.5 liter turbocharged diesel V8 engine and it also comes with a five-speed manual transmission. How cool is that? You're basically getting old design with a little bit of a modern touch but also a very tough and capable off-roader. Here's a quick look at one Land Cruiser I saw towing a trailer. Many trucks and SUVs around Noosa Heads were actually towing. Of course, not to be forgotten, Ford is a big player in Australia and I saw dozens and dozens of Ford Rangers running around. Anything from an older crew cab to a brand new wild track model with a snorkel and an off-road bumper in the front. And here's the thing, manufacturers like Ford understand the need and they're offering all of these accessories from the factory, including the snorkel. Naturally, in Australia, the Ford Ranger truck lineup comes with a choice of turbo diesel engines. It starts with a 2.2 liter diesel with about 250 pound feet of torque or thereabouts. And then it goes to a 3.2 liter diesel. And this is the engine I saw in Australia the most in a Ford Ranger. And now this torque is around 350 pound feet of torque. Pretty much every truck I saw had a hitch and the towing rating for most of these mid-sized trucks is actually three and a half thousand kilograms. It converts to about 7,700 pounds and this is with a towing package with the most powerful engine configuration and that's a really good towing number but most noteworthy is the payload. Most of these utes which are considered mid-size in the United States have a payload of over 2,000 pounds they could be half-ton trucks by the American standard. Some of the other trucks I saw were the Mazda BT-50, the VW Amarok, and the Mitsubishi Triton trucks. And these are from used trucks all the way to brand new vehicles as well. So all of these trucks we do not get in the United States, hence the forbidden fruit. I really wanted to spend more time checking out some of these trucks, including, of course, the Ford Ranger Raptor. I just didn't have enough time on this particular trip. I'm originally from Russia, and I remember seeing, back in the 90s, many different Nissan Patrol and Land Cruiser vehicles in and around Moscow. And I was really happy to see some of those vehicles also in Australia. And I'm talking about 90s and 2000s era Nissan patrols that are always beefed up and they either have a straight six gas engine, some of them are also powered by diesels, and a lot of Land Cruisers, including Prado and regular full size Land Cruiser as well. And a lot of them actually have towing mirrors in addition to 
all the other equipment for off-roading. So a lot of them are actually towing camping trailers and everything is really safety oriented with large towing mirrors and proper, proper trailer setups. This is a Land Cruiser Prado. It's a Toyota, it's an older one. And a lot of the trucks you see here in Australia are actually diesel powered. And I imagine this one has a diesel under its hood as well. But here I just wanted to show you a mod that's basically on most pickup trucks, SUVs, or as they call trucks here, utes. It's basically a brush guard, cow bar, cow catcher, and a lot of them are very beefy. And a lot of them because uh, are attached to their trucks because of necessity, because there's a lot of wildlife here. And basically most roads here are dirt. In fact, half of the, dirt, uh, the roads in Australia overall are dirt and gravel roads. So if you're going into the wilderness, you need to protect the front of your truck. And in this case, it's a brush guard. After seeing all of these trucks, I quickly noticed a pattern as far as modifications are concerned. Just take a look at this older Grand Cherokee. By the way, I did not see too many Jeeps in Queensland. But a snorkel, it's not just for water crossings, it's also to help with dust. Since a lot of the roads are gravel or dirt, a snorkel helps a lot with getting cleaner air in those conditions. Here's another common modification. It's a roof rack and an awning. This is an older Mitsubishi Pajero, also known as a Montero in the United States. And here's another Pajero I noticed, and this is a rare thing. It's completely stock. Just take a look at that. I just wish we still had Mitsubishi Monteros available in the US. Here's a Hyundai Santa Fe. Yes, we do get this car in the US, but not what's under the hood of this particular one. This is a diesel powered Santa Fe. And of course it has a brush guard on the front of it. Here's another crossover that's disappeared from the United States. This Suzuki Vitara is showcasing, of course, an additional off-road light up front and an awning. It gets really hot in Australia in the summer. So any shade you can get is a good thing. Switching gears for just a second, check out this VW Transporter camper van that slammed to the ground. But of course it has an awning and it is a four motion all wheel drive van. No, I did not forget about Nissan. I actually saw a lot of Navara trucks. Of course they're called Frontier in the US. But here is a mildly modified newer Navara and I think this is what the next Frontier may look like at least remotely in the US but this truck sporting a off-road light bar in the front a little bit of a lift and of course a sports bar in the back how about General Motors well the Chevy Colorado is actually a Holden Colorado in Australia and here's a Z71 4x4 truck I noticed and it has a very unique rear sports bar slash spoiler setup with a tunnel cover. Very neat looking truck, but mostly stock. Enough with four wheel drive trucks. How about the real Australian Utes? Well, here's a Holden Ute SV6. I didn't see too many of these, but of course they are there. These are basically the sport trucks of Australia. This happens to be a six cylinder, but it's sporting a hitch and it's ready to tow. It's got a tunnel cover, it's got a sports bar. And here you go, here's another one on dubs. How cool is that? High performance utes, of course, are a big thing in Australia as well. And switching gears to the end, here's another look at a tray utility bed. Here's another very common sight here in Australia. Basically a tray bed on a pickup truck and it can be for work or even for play with a little camper or maybe a tent or maybe a dog kennel in the back. I've seen it all in just about a couple days here. Really fun stuff. This once again is a Hilux 2.8. D4D, so uh, this is one of the more modern ones. And I hope you enjoyed this little look into uh, the trucks of Australia. I'm really excited. I haven't spent a lot of time here. I'm a little bit upset that I wasn't able to stay longer, but I really want to come back and you can be sure I'll be back here. So go back to TFL Offroad or tfltruck.com for more news views and real world 
even from Australia, truck and SUV reviews. Thank you, bye.